Greetings and welcome, my minions, to another episode of Let's Play Dungeons 2. Alright, so let's just follow the instructions to the tutorial, because other stuff will get added later. However, we are now in, in control of the monster faction, so it's, uh, actually let's not do that. I mean, I want to do that, but it's not necessary. The monster faction, anyway. Consisting of orcs, goblins, trolls, and naga. Suddenly, Eventually. One of the repellent evil servants became very thirsty. This was typical of a troop member of the unanonymous alcoholics known as the Horde. The disco <laughs> made his way to the nearest brewery to quench his thirst. A thirsty orc arrived at the brewery. Eager and slavering, he started demolishing the alcohol hoarding evil's stock of beer. Yeah, three whole barrels. <laughs> but yeah, as part of the monster faction, their way of making the rooms more efficient is by hammering things on the wall. Pretty much everyone can do that. Now, as far as orcs go, orcs are, the, like I said, they're just meat shields essentially. They don't do the most damage, but they soak up plenty of it and are good for that. As far as what they do in the dungeon, well, they, they keep uh, the other creatures working as efficiently as possible. And that's pretty much all they do. If they don't get to do that, they get bored, they will want to drink, they will want to exercise. But we don't have access to those rooms right now, and that's not important. Right now, I just want to have the fine orc. One louse infested orc crawled up from the depths and declared allegiance to the ultimate evil. The first step towards the creation of a powerful army had been taken. The dungeon of the expansion mad evil grew and prospered, but unfortunately it had reached the maximum possible population it could currently manage. Now a creature would have to be thrown into the bottomless pit before any others could be brought in. The profound evil had had enough of dungeon sightseeing and now wanted to move to the surface to try a dish that is best served cold. Revenge. Some Alliance members were bound to be guarding the entrance to the overworld. A fine appetizer for a vengeful evil. The creature disappeared into the pit of uselessness with a long drawn and gradually diminishing... <laughs> this particular act of wickedness brought a smile to the face of the ultimate evil. It did indeed. All right, that's... The nameless evil's creatures came upon a spider's nest during their search for an entrance to the overworld. It would take more than one orc to sort that out. The abysmal evil used the Hand of Terror to grab several of the creatures that were still completely inexperienced at fighting and threw them onto the spider's nest. Now, luckily, spiders are usually quite weak. There are strong spiders, but they will not be appearing here. The strategically well-versed evil patted itself on the back, proud that it had led its troops into battle with such aplomb. And by led, I just simply mean chucking them at the enemy. The basics of a dungeon were now in place. However, the brewery was puny and didn't really have room to store beer barrels in, and the treasury was also anything but impressive in size. Quickly, the expansion hungry evil set out to enlarge its dungeon. Alright, we can do that. More treasuries, and this needs to be bigger. Well, let's make it bigger. Now, oh. Making the brewery bigger doesn't necessarily make it more efficient. Uh, it just usually means that you want to have more storage space in a room. In case of the brewery. The of the ultimate evil suddenly developed a craving for chocolate. Mm, chocolate. Uh, well, let's get one snot back. Now, as part of the monster faction, uh, hiring monsters is quite simple. Once you have the money, you just click on one of the buttons and immediately a monster will come and then there will be a cooldown until you can get the next one of the same time. This will be different for the other factions, but we'll cover that later. Let's expand. So now my brewery can store 
34 barrels, but it's only as 100% efficiency until the walls get uh, banged up again. There's not much point in putting any of the other piles active, because that will just divide the attention of my snots, and I kind of just don't want to do that. Also, we need to dig down here. We also have this book, which is the spider killer. Chance of landing critical hits. Not particularly useful on orcs, but might as well. Alright, so who wants to be a better orc? Goresh. I've heard you screaming from hell, so... Let's uh, have you learn that skill. So now we can see that. He gets the special name. And he now does. And has an extra chance of landing critical hits. Has awoken, but its brothers are still asleep. Huh? What on earth was that? That's not in my script. What a weirdo. No matter. We better get back to concentrating on the dungeon. Now there is a funny little priority system within the gold mining in that the snots would prefer to dig uh, the loose uh, veins over here. Probably because they're um, easier to dig through. But it's something to keep in mind in case uh, you want to quickly dig out gold. Another book. The red lucky finder. Regeneration rate plus two. Well, who wants that? Mokdor, I like your name. Have that book. And let's keep on digging. Now, I don't think there's much to be found in the outskirts here. But might as well dig it. I can dig it. Dig it all the way. And as you can see, monstrosity loomed out of the darkness on six, no, eight legs. This dungeon's <laughs> human guards had been ancient history for a long while. Now it was home to a huge spider and her brood. Would Sam and Frodo escape it and continue their journey to Mount Doom, or was this the end of the Ring Bearer? Hang on a minute, that's not the right text. Where were we? Oh yes, a huge spider, henceforth called the Spider Queen. It would be necessary to eliminate the Spider Queen before the Horde could reach the surface. The Spider Queen sent forth a wave of her children. Of course, the ultimate evil was fully aware of this danger and immediately prepared to defend itself against them. At least, that's what I hope. Yeah, yeah, I do hope. Now, we do have a potion over here, but since none of my orcs are critically injured, that's not really point useful. And they're still prettying up the dungeon. Right, so my burrow is now 110% efficient. Sweet. But I really do need to take care of that spider queen, so let's do that. With my level 1 orcs. They get different skills in fighting and productivity. Orcs not so much because they really only slap other minions, but well And another wave of spiders set out to destroy the ultimate evil. Right, go forth my minions. Do brave battle against the foul spider. And have fun while you're doing it. Have a drink. Have another drink. The vile perversion, once called the Spider Queen, had nothing more with which she could fight the Horde. Later, the sensitive evil would have her innards made into a lava lamp. The way to the surface was open. Now it was time to put those vengeance plans into practice. The vile evil wanted to take this opportunity to utter a really sinister laugh. But unfortunately, its physical state made this unviable. Instead, it asked the narrator to do a bit of sinister laughter on its behalf. Oh well, here goes. Deep breath. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Once the ultimate evil had escaped from the depths, still fettered to the throne, it traveled to wreak terrible vengeance on those who had done this, heavily supported by its little snots. The first target was Paladin Robert, now King of the Alliance. He had withdrawn to the quiet surroundings of his hunting lodge. There, he would be the perfect victim. Indeed. Let's go and get him. However, I don't think just orcs will be sufficient. According to scouts, King Robert spent most of his time strolling around his hunting lodge garden reciting poetry. Soon his poetry would turn into mournful ballads. The vengeful evil thirsted to defeat the Alliance's king and mount his head on the wall as a trophy. Whoops, of course, I really mean that he wanted to take all of King Robert's cookies away. Better play it safe or the age classification folks will be after me. Before that, however, the ultimate evil had to do a bit of work on the dungeon. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to fund even a small army made up of a few orcs. Right. Treasure hunting we go. And might as well put down a patch of treasure uh, the first chamber. treasury was completed. Soon, greedy evil's little snots would fill it with gold. You know the golden rule, right? Whoever has the gold makes the rule. Yes, I'm sure that's the golden rule. It must be. It sounds so true. Now, as for building rooms, you can just... Uh, you can just do that from this menu. Or, if you want to just add to a room, click on the room itself. And use that button down here to extend. Beyond that, there's not much else we can get at this point. Beyond the brewery. Which we don't really need just yet. Alright. Now, normally, if there are enemies coming, they will come from this side. I will have to keep that in mind yeah, for future planning. Alright. Let's get some orcs coming. The warmongering evil had hired the first orc. As ancient wisdom says, violence is a solution. Usually the only one. Right now, the restricted evil was only able to call upon another orc entered the service of the military savvy evil. The horde was growing and prospering. No, that's a pity. That the narrator interrupts itself like that. But oh well. Let's get the first brewery was completed. Soon beer would the time to attack appeared to be right. On the surface, in the tavern of a small, miserable village, some adventurers gathered. They were acquiring Dutch courage for their visit to the dungeon by downing several beers. The dungeon had to be destroyed. The steady pounding in the rocks had given rise to overworld rumors of a new dungeon. A group of heroes set out to plunder its riches, and the ultimate evil was already looking forward to this visit. <laughs> sure. The strategy guidebook, Dungeons for Dummies, says, <clears throat> Mountains don't always just consist of rocks and stone but may also include natural as well as artificial caves and rooms. These usually contain treasures and dangers to make digging around underground more exciting. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Uh, I mean, I'm a little bit curious about where the phrase Dutch courage comes from. I mean, it's not like my people are known for they're drinking. Well, no as such. I mean, we do have some good beers, I'm told. Not that I've tried them, because, well, 
Why would you drink beer? Don't answer that question honestly. The throne room is under attack. The heroes didn't know what had hit them, as several orcs bore down from nowhere and annihilated them. This group of heroes had plundered their last dungeon, but there would be more. Oh, well, let's stop that then, by going to the surface. And suddenly this game becomes an RTS game, sort of, as you control the land like that, uh, the units like that. Now. Again, we have a book here now. Unlike before, I can't uh, pick that up with my hand, but I can tell a unit to pick it up and then it will start using that book. Uh, that book I'll leave alone though. Don't need it. Besides, we're just here to kill the village. And now, as you can see, my orcs don't really do that much damage against anything that's particularly normal in units types. I mean, against these villagers, they're efficient enough, but all they really do is absorb damage. All right, let's focus fire on this lancer, though. The slowly made itself cozy underground. Although this was a sensible decision, there was a large and lovely overworld out there, just waiting to be destroyed. All right, let's kill this last farmer. It's payday. Now, payday is not a problem for units on the surface because they will automatically get paid. Just to prevent them from getting cranky and walking away. All right, let's take care of the tavern. And that should end the threat to my dungeon for now. Come on, put your back so into it, you lazy orcs. I can't slap you while you're on the surface, though. A and delicious rumble announced the fact that the village's last house had crashed to the ground. Ha! There would be no more heroes meeting there to seek out the dungeon of the destruction hungry evil. The hunting lodge of King Robert lay in the north. It was there that the ultimate evil would finally get its long awaited revenge. However, it looked pretty damn well guarded. Maybe it should first visit the cave to the west, inhabited by a clan of goblins, where the cunning evil could do a little negotiating. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a book here, we've got rang last orders at the bar, which gives extra HP, good for orcs, well, in my opinion. So, Birdish, Birshy Dock. Let's go find some goblins to help. Forward, my brothers. And other dungeons, yep. Other dungeons function more or less like you're on the uh, surface world. Usually involving quest-like things. Until they, yeah, unless they hook up back up to your original dungeon. Traded himself joyfully before the ultimate evil and immediately dispatched two goblins into its dungeon with a few plans for a new room, a tinkerer's cave. This was built as quickly as possible. All right, that, that let's actually use that. Now we can just quickly jump back to here. All right, let's set up a tinkerer's cave. And as you can see, the goblins that I have are already building. But I kind of do want my orcs to come back home, so let's, uh, let's go away. Not much else we need here anyway. But hey, we have all goblins and we don't have to go through endless hoops of annoying side quests to get them. 
We just need to build them something where they can be of use, because goblins are kind of pants in the fighting. All fighting. But we'll discuss that next time. Thank you for watching.